Hey there, I'm Bobsy, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at remote procedure calls, also known as RPCs, and how we use them. So, if, first of all, if you're not familiar with the scene right here, we made this in a previous video with the network manager setup and also with the player that's networked. If you haven't seen that video, I much recommend going back and watching that. Now, that being said, let's look at how we can use a remote procedure call. So, as an example in this video, I'm just going to make the player change his color over the network. So, first of all, let's talk about what is remote, um, a remote procedure call. So basically a RPC is a way to call a function over the network. It's a way that you can either tell the server or you can tell all the network observers that you're running this function. So there are two RPCs as I just mentioned. We have the server RPC and we have the observers RPC. The server RPC is a way to send a function to be run directly on the server. So it's only the server instance that's actually running this function. And an observers RPC is a way to have all observers run a function at the same time. So first of all, in order to make observers RPC work, we gotta go onto our player and we gotta add the component of the network observer. Now let's get to setting up the script. So let's make a new script and we're gonna call this player Ola network. And we're gonna connect this script onto our player. Now let's open up the script. And in here, just like with the player controller, we gotta do the same network setup. So we're going to add the using fishnet.connection and fishnet.object. We're also going to make the script into a network behavior, which is just a network version of mono behavior. And then we got to use this on start client function as well. Uh, actually, let me just copy the whole thing. Yeah, and then we can just remove what is in here. And what we basically want is just like we did in the player controller script, we don't want to be able to control all the other players. We also don't want to be able to control the color of all the other players. So let's do a get component and then find this own script. <laughs> dot enabled equals to false. Now what we're basically saying here, just to make it short, is that are we the owner? Then we do nothing. But if we're not the owner of this object, we want to disable the script as to not be able to control something on an object we're not owners of. So first of all, we need some variables. We did our player setup with the player being individual from his bean body. Uh, as you can see here, this is his body and this is him. So he doesn't actually hold the renderer. So first of all, we need a public reference to him or to the body, I mean. So we're gonna do game object and then just call it body. And then we also just need to be able to set whatever color that we wanna to switch to. So let's just call that end color. Now we want to be able to do this by the press of a button. So let's just do an update loop. I would say input.get key down, key code, Oops, e code f. So just if I'm pressing F, I'll run whichever function I input here. So now let's actually make the function. And the way this gotta work is that first of all, we gotta have a function that lets all the observers know that we're running this function. But we also wanna make sure that the server is the one pushing out this function to everybody. So what we firstly wanna do is let's make the observer RPC, where we're actually gonna make the color change. So let's do a public void change color. And the, the thing that's a little bit unique about um, networking instead of just doing single player is in here we actually have a direct reference to the body. The thing is you cannot network that reference since the body doesn't actually hold the network object component like the player does. So what we gotta do is we actually gotta send through the player through the network since he holds the network object. And then once we've sent him, we can then get the player color network script and then get the reference to the body from that. So that's just a little bit of a workaround, but it's still super simple. So we just want to send game object and call that player. And we also want a color, which we just call color. And in this case, we want to do player dot get component. And we want to get this script because we want to get the reference to the body. So we're going to do player color network. And then we're going to do the body, then get component. We want the renderer of that, not render buffer. That's my mistake. On the renderer, and then we want to do dot material dot color equals to the color that we're sending over the network. Now I wish it was as easy as just saying change color and putting it in here, but it's not. We got to send it to the server first and let the server know to push this out to every player. So we got to do a server RPC, which is then I'm just going to call public void change color server. And this one needs the exact same variables just to be able to send them through. So we'll just grab this and send that through. And then we're gonna do change color uh, and we're gonna give it the 
uh, variables that is sent through the network here. So we're just gonna give it the player and the color. And then up here, we're gonna do change color circle. And we're gonna give it our own game object, which is the player that we wanted to reference. And we're gonna give it the end color that we set at the beginning. And this should basically work. So if we now go out into Unity, we gotta set up our variables first. So we've got to put the reference for the game body and we're gonna choose an end color. I'm just gonna choose a blue color, like so. And I'm gonna make sure to save him. And let's go and try and build the game. So I've now set up the server and I've connected as a player on the uh, build game and I've just made the server on the inspector. So you can see right now I'm on the, uh, the just client, the build game. And if I press F, you can see I just changed my color. And if we go into the, whoops, into the Unity version, and we're gonna press F and go back to our game, we can see he also changed color. So now this works, and hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea of how you can use remote procedure calls to send functions, to send information, and to do a whole bunch of stuff. You can do so much with this, and you pretty much have the freedom to really just start making multiplayer from now. But in the next video, I am going to be talking about how you spawn and despawn objects over the network. So I definitely think that you want to watch that video as well to get an understanding. And in the video after that, we're going to talk about synchronizing, synchronizing variables, which is going to be much easier than having to set up a remote procedure call every time you want to synchronize something. So I see you in those videos and have a wonderful day.